In this game, Magnus shows us some very creative attacking ideas against his opponent, the brilliant Vasily Ivanchuk. This game was played in 2007 at Linares, one of the great tournaments of chess history. Let us jump right in and see what Magnus has in store. He begins with d4. He has white, but Ivanchuk has black. A knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3. And Ivanchuk does not play the King's Indian, but d5, or the Grunfeld defense. Similar to the King's Indian, it wants to let white set up a big center and then attack it. But this game is usually not closed in the way the King's Indian is. Uh, Carlson plays the main line, grabbing on d5, knight d5, e4, and then knight c3, b c3. And we see here the white center in the exchange, Grunfeld, with pawns on c3, d4, and e4. And black is going to attack that d4 square with everything he's got, bishop g7, c5, knight c6, etc. White's going to try to protect it. So bishop to g7, we can see these thematic attacking ideas from uh, white, or black, excuse me. Bishop c4 from Carlson. Basically, he wants to develop this knight to e2. So he wants to get the bishop outside before the knight goes to e2 to block that bishop in. C5, black uh, continues to put pressure on the center, and now knight to e2. The reason he goes to e2 is because after knight f3, he'd rather it not get pinned by the bishop at g4. That would be a mistake right now because of bishop f7 check and, and white would win. But after castling, it's a fairly effective tool. So knight to e2 from white to protect d4. Knight c6, we see three pieces, the bishop, knight, and queen. And, and, and a pawn, all attacking d4, so bishop to e3. Carlson defends it uh, with a pawn and three pieces. Castles, castles, and here the main move for black is queen to c7, uh, creating x-ray pressure down the c-file towards the undefended bishop at c4. But Ivanchuk always likes to play things a little bit differently, and he plays knight to a5, attacking that bishop directly and trying to uh, clear this diagonal for his own bishop a little bit later. Put that there. Bishop to d3, b6. Now that diagonal is opened for the bishop to attack e4. Rook to c1. Carlson anticipates this c file is going to be opened after the exchange in the center, so he places his rook on that uh, square, anticipating that. And of course, if black were to play. Uh, the pawn up, he could tuck the bishop back at b1 without blocking in the rook at a1. Ivanchuk does take on d4, cd4, and e6, trying to fix this d4 pawn in place. And what black wants to do is just consolidate, maybe queen d7, knight c6, along with bishop b7, and then just centralize those rooks on the c and d files and apply as much pressure as possible. Queen to d2, Carlson connects his rooks. Bishop to b7 putting some more pressure on the center, targeting e4. But Magnus reasons this way. Uh, he has a nice center that is well defended, and it's very hard to attack. He's really probably fair to say he's won the opening battle. And since he has this very strong center, he feels justified in going ahead and attacking his opponent's king, which he does with this move, h4. The idea, of course, is to play h5 and soften up that kingside uh, structure for black, and he can trade off the dark squared bishops with bishop h6 and so forth. Um, the pawn looks like it's hanging. I mean, it is hanging, but it would be a mistake to take it, because if he Ivanchuk were to take on h4, then bishop g5, and after a queen g4, f3, queen h5, knight g3, the queen would be trapped. He could play bishop d4 check, but you could block with the rook. And uh, the queen is a goner, so he doesn't take the pawn. Instead, he plays queen to e7. Best is probably knight to c6, putting pressure on d4. But queen to e7, he wants to keep an eye on this f6 square, his dark squares. And perhaps this seventh rank could open up, and the queen could defend the king laterally. So that's another uh, advantage of uh, the queen going to e7. So Magnus continues with his plan of softening up the king's side by playing h5. Rook f to c8. If white's going to attack, black wants to get as many pieces off the board as possible, so he seeks to trade off the rooks down the only open file on the board. And here Magnus plays e5, which was a novelty at the time this game was played. It's been played since, but it was a novelty then. 
And basically what he's doing is, yes, he's opening up this nice light square diagonal for the bishop at b7, but he's blunting the bishop at g7, and he's adding to his control of f6. And what he wants to do is penetrate on these dark squares, and e5 helps him to control that uh, f6 square. Ivanchuk continues with his plan, and the rooks do come off the board. So now it's just minor, three minor pieces and a queen. Is that enough to generate pressure? Let's see. Bishop to g5 from Magnus. Hitting the queen with tempo and positioning his bishop to enter into f6 on that key dark square. The queen goes to c7 on the only uh, open file on the board. Um, queen to d7, keeping pressure on d4 along with knight to c6 was probably uh, a little bit more accurate as it turns out. Uh, queen to c7, and now bishop to f6. Continue, continuing with this plan to get in on those dark squares, challenging that bishop at f6. Um, if bishop takes f6 here, then e f6, and Magnus is threatening queen h6, queen to g7 mate. That pawn protects the queen. Really, queen to d8 would uh, be necessary. Not only does that pressure f6, but the queen could slide to f8 to defend. But then you take on g6. If uh, fg6, queen to g5, setting up an f7 check discovered attack, the king would have to blockade on f7 probably. It'd just be terrible. He's, he's lost there. And after hg6, queen to g5 would be played. And the demolition sacrifice, bishop takes g6, is basically decisive. So that would be that. Would be that. Uh, so that is why he does not take on f6. Knight to c6 is played, finally recentralizing that knight. But now queen to g5, bringing those pieces into those dark squares. The threat is to take on g7. After king g7, the queen would come in. And then after h6, eat on these dark squares. Either mate or the loss of the h7 pawn, followed by the queening of white's own h pawn, would follow quickly. So black has to take a, a desperate, has to make a desperate decision here. And he plays h6 to kick that queen out. But he does weaken his king side by doing this. Uh, here, Magnus plays a very, very strong move. It's actually a double attack, even though it doesn't really look like it at first. Uh, queen to c1. The double attack is that he's threatening to take twice on g6 with the pawn and bishop, but he also is pinning the knight on c6 against the queen. And so Ivanchuk doesn't want him to just take on g6 twice. That would be crushing. So he plays g5. But now Magnus turns his attention towards this pinned knight on c6. Plays bishop b5, attacks it a second time. Ivanchuk plays bishop d7, defends it a second time. But now Magnus has a way of getting a third piece into that attack and putting pressure on that knight. Do you see what he does? That's right, he plays d4, d5. The pawn has to be dealt with because it's threatening the knight, so it has to be captured. But now Magnus plays knight to d4, and he has three pieces, the queen, knight, and bishop, attacking this knight on c6 and the knight cannot be defended again, and uh, it is lost. So Ivanchuk has to make the most of the situation. He takes on f6, ef6, now queen to d6. Magnus captures on c6. Now, queen f6, if, if you take with the, the bishop here, it doesn't make much difference. You just take with the queen, and you don't even get the f6 pawn in that situation. So queen takes f6, bishop takes d7, and queen takes d4. So Ivanchuk has two pawns in exchange for the piece. Is that enough for him to survive? Let us see. G3 is played by Magnus, giving his queen, a, a king excuse me, a little room to maneuver. Uh, and he has another idea. He's going to support that f-pawn advance. Ivanchuk plays queen to c5. He invites the exchange of queens, hoping that uniting these two pawns will allow them to make progress up the board because they'll be more powerful together. Uh, Carlson says it's not going to be enough, and he goes ahead and does take that queen, pawn takes, and now you have these two pawns, uh, but let's watch how Magnus deals with those pawns. First, he plays bishop to c6. That forces the d-pawn forward to d4, otherwise it would just be captured, and then, boom, then bishop b5, using the bishop to control these squares so the pawns can't advance, and uh, he's fixed those pawns in place. Ivanchuk brings his king up, hoping that he can use his king to escort the pawns forward. But now f4. This, is, this was an, another idea behind g3. And why he's playing this, he wants to control this square on uh, e5 and create a wall, a barrier, 
that Ivanchuk's king cannot cross. Pawn takes, pawn takes, king e7, king f2, king d6, and now bishop c4. And we see that barrier uh, that uh, keeps black's king out. f6 is played, then king to f3, and in this position, black resigned. The reason basically is Carlson is threatening to play king to e4, king to f5, and just eat these kingside pawns. And if black were to play f5 himself, then this bishop on uh, c4 would eventually win that pawn because it would be on a light square. He could basically use his king to blockade these pawns and switch his bishop over. And uh, since that is it, Ivanchuk resigned. A very smooth, well-played game for Magnus Carlsen. He got in on, on, on those dark squares and won a nice victory. I hope you enjoyed this game. See you again soon at Chess Dog. Goodbye.